tongue, hand, head. No, 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 no. This is not a biology class. This is sports today. Whatever were the names that I took, yes, they may be named after body parts, but they are actually cricketer names. You've heard about Travis Head. But in the ongoing test match between England and Ireland at Lords, there were two players who had these names. Fionn Hand and Josh Tung. Do you think this is a very unique name? Names of cricketers named after body parts, the anatomy of a cricketer? Well, if you have to look at it, if you dig deep into history, there are several players who had such names. Don't believe me? Check out this list. Travis Head. The most notable anatomy part that you can even think about when you talk about a cricketer. Travis Head has been one of the best cricketers that Australia have produced in the last couple of years. And Australia have been in a much better position thanks to a cool, calm head, if you know what I mean. This cricketer did not play that much of first-class cricket when it came to his province in South Africa called Girkwalan West. But the bowling attack was definitely not toothless because Graham Tooth was the individual who shepherded the bowling attack. And needless to say, he gave plenty of bite to a championship hope for Girkwalan West. David Bryan, one of the prominent Zimbabwe left-arm pacers in the 90s, you would remember him in those grainy DD visuals when he was bowling to India in that one-off test at Harare in 1992. David Brain, it really, really makes you think about it, doesn't it? In that era, she was one of the stars of Australian women's cricket. An average of 29 and an average of 27 in ODIs and tests respectively. But Miriam Nee really would have made a lot of cricket fans' knees weak had she been in a different era. Her contributions indeed were spectacular. This man produced about 2,000 runs in first-class cricket. Yes, it seemed as if the fortune lines on his palm were really, really pointing to a great future. But Archibald Palm unfortunately did not do well in the first test that he played. Needless to say, he may have not taken palm reading as a future after cricket, right? In just two first-class games, he managed only 12 runs. That was the sad story of William Back in the 1880s and the 1890s. Safe to say, Australian cricket never got his back. In an era when West Indies cricket dominated, Several players could not keep their chin up. One of them was Michael Chin. He just managed to play one first-class game where he hit 57, but he was never ever selected after that. Sadly, it was the last time Chin ever played cricket. An average of 15 after 15 matches. That stat was not digested by a lot of people, especially because his name was John Kidney. John Kidney was part of the West Indies team at that point in time and he got a call for the match against the MCC who toured there in 1912. But he could not make that much of an impact. So that is about it from this special video that, that has been produced. I have to go to Fine Leg for some work duties. Thank you so much folks for joining us for this special video. We'll be back with more updates on sports today. Tap that bell icon so you know when we go live and don't forget we are on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Bye-bye. So,